Hi guys, Jamie from Start Right here. This week's not strictly about music, but is about an important part of musical heritage in Manchester. For over 30 years, the Star and Guard has been a live music venue and host to a wide variety of fantastic club nights. Unfortunately, as part of Manchester City Council and Network Rail's war on culture in Manchester, which also threatens great rock bars as Salisbury and Grand Central and live music venue Gorilla, the Star and Garter is under threat of closure due to the expansion of Piccadilly. To protest this, details are down in the description. You can send letters or emails to the Department for Transport uh, protesting the closure of the Star and Garter. What follows is an interview with Andy Martin, licensee of the Star and Garter. We discuss its past and present as well as its uncertain future. So I'm here with Andy Martin, a licensee of the Star and Garter. So the Star and Garter is a legendary venue in Manchester and really at the heart of the punk scene and has been for quite some time. If you look at archives online of old flyers, we found punk gigs, anti-Nazi league punk gigs from 1982. Wow. So, you know, it goes back way further as a punk venue. Yeah, yeah. Or a venue that did that kind of thing. Just back to, you know, when I was 10. Yeah. So really, but it, it sort of it gained. You know, it's got a reputation now as a punk venue. But then again, there's people who say it's the people who call it the Temple of Doom, people who call it the House of Metal, the home of punk, the Smiths Pub, if you believe the Union News. Yeah. Well, know, it, it, all things to all men. When you come to a night at the Star and Guy, it is um, is very inclusive. Is not there's no dickheads basically. Don't always selling always one of the few selling points we had. You know that. People who came here could read and write, and thought, well, they knew their own name. It's not just for young people as well. Like it's a, no, it's no. quite a range of ages. Well, you look at the Smiths' night. Yeah. When the unis are open, so you got you know you got freshers there, mm. and you've got people who are in the fifties. Yeah. The people in the fifties are usually the ones that moan the most if they're queuing outside to get in, though. You know, because there's people. Who, I've actually had that said to me. People pointing inside at just some kid, maybe your age, at the bar. He wasn't even born. <laughs> When the Smiths had the first, I've seen him three times. He wasn't even alive for the first time and throw him out, let me in. <laughs> mm. Also, if you work inside a pub or a music venue, you work behind the bar, people think you're brilliant. Put a coat on and stand at the door because you've got the licence. You're fucking invisible. Mm. Unfortunately, this star and car is under threat of closure. Due to the Northern Hub construction, which will be extending Piccadilly Station across Two the road. Platforms. Yeah. Two new platforms at Piccadilly. Just what the North West needs, <laughs> if you ask Network Rail. Network Rail's intention was, was, at the first was not to buy the building. It was that we closed for first a year, then two, now possibly three years. Um, I mean, even if we closed for a year, then you effectively killed the business anyway. Um, two, three, even worse. Because um, all the nights, like the Smith's night and the punk gigs and the metal or whatever, they'll have to find somewhere else to go. And it's always suffered anyway because of the location we're in. Mm-hmm. I mean, you said the first time you, the first time you ever tried looking for it, you walked past it, yeah. then came back. And where the Northern Hub's concerned, they, they looked at it, said we'd have to shut. We said we couldn't shut for that amount of time and maintain a business. Um, they can't knock it down because it's grade 2 listed but they can do what they want with the inside right. you just can't change the exterior yeah. now they could probably get around that if the place was falling down which if it's been unoccupied for 3 years and had no money spent on it it'll start falling down anyway if it's not been robbed mm. um, so in the end they were, sort of, they were left with no option but then to buy it which then comes in the form of CPO yeah. which we got at the end of last year but in, in, in this whole area, because they'll close off all the Fairfield Street area, that's why the pub would have to close. Mm. That's why the Star and Garden have to close. There's 118 compulsory purchase orders now. Wow, really? Yeah, we're number, we're number 24. There's already some, there's down on Fairfield Street and Temperance Street, there's already businesses now leaving the area. There's yeah. all, you know, they're already moving, relocating. Just the Wimwam Cafe. Wimwam, yeah, well, that's, that's Whitworth Street. Um, and we, we, we think we've got it hard. Winman had it worse than us. Yeah. Because where Winman was concerned, they were renting their unit, their archway, from uh, somebody from, I think, is it the local um, takeaway that's next door to it? Right. They were renting it from them. Um, 
So, you know, they were told the same thing as us when they, because it's part of the same project that they're expanding Oxford Road Station as well. And they were told that they'd have to close for two years. Mm -hmm. They were like, right, well, let's look into being compensated for it or seeing what we can do next, what the next move is. Yeah. And then they were then told that, oh, well, you're only renting this archway. So effectively, you could be given six weeks to get out. Yeah. So it just they just closed up shop and gave up. Well, they didn't give up. They were forced to give up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and we, we, think, we, we think we've got it hard. But, you know, that was I mean, some of these savings sunk into that. Yeah. Do you think there's any chance of the Star and Garter in this location surviving no. the Northern Hub? No. It would take... Ideally, right, you'd need network rail. If, you know, it would be, I know it's not like I'm particularly big fans of theirs, but to, to be fair to them, they have been down the line with us. You know, they said, this is what's going to happen, this is what we'll do. Mm. And they've advised, to that extent, you know, what, what our position could be. But if... In an ideal situation, they would pay enough compensation to pay off any all debt that is now that now belongs to the Star and Garter, mm. as far as you know, beer and licensing is concerned. They'd pay all that off, and then compensate us for closing for three years and refurbish the building, and then give it back to us. Yeah, and then we'd carry on regardless. Because I mean, inside, I mean, apart from a bit of lick of paint and repaired a few things. I wouldn't really change much of the inside. Mm -hmm. Outside, new roof, and fix the walls, fix the guttering. I'd love all that to be done. That's all we ever aimed for, just that. As long as, it, you know, as, long as the roof didn't leak, yeah. we were happy with that. But they won't do that. No. They'll CPO the building, board it up for three years, finish the station there, and then the whole other side of the story is what happens with Mayfield. Yeah. Um, and then that's when this place goes from, like we've said, Old Kent Road to Mayfair in the space of five years. Mm. And the network rail can sell it on. And to be honest, if you think about it, it's, it'd be less than 100 yards from a main entrance to a station, to Manchester's main station, mm. um, to the to two new platforms that connect it with London, in, uh, sorry, London in one direction and Edinburgh and Liverpool and everywhere else in the other. And Victoria Station, obviously. Yeah. And the Metrolink. And then possibly out the back, you're going to have what looks like spinning fields, and then this place stuck there. So you know what you're looking at. Yeah. Starbucks or weather spoons, really, are you? So do you think that the soul of the place, the Star and Garter, with the gigs and the the club nights and everything, do you think that could be replicated elsewhere or transplanted in some no. Frankenstein? No. <laughs> no. You can give it a go. But I mean, where where else in the in the centre of Manchester is there a, a two floor venue? Upstairs, meet someone you possibly fall in love with. Get downstairs, see them in the cold light of downstairs, then lose them again. I've seen so many girls <laughs> do that to boys. If you, you remember the the invented chill out zones in clubs, everybody was talking about chill out zones, chill out zones. It'll stop deaths from ecstasy and everything. It'll cure everything. And we already had one. You know what I mean? Pioneers. Another thing we invented. You know, in clubs. You know, a piece of paper where you write down your requests. That one. Really? That smile. Yeah, yeah. Well, People came in and thought it was it, groundbreaking. Yeah. Like, what? Because <laughs> <laughs> you get the sheets. And that's, it's great that it's a big sheet as well because you can see what everyone else has requested. Yeah, and criticised it. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah, so yeah. It, proceeded, it therefore preceded Twitter and Facebook. <laughs> it's an <laughs> original social network within a club. It was. Yeah. Every time. Although I never understood why they have a request sheet at a Smith's night. It's, that's fucking... <laughs> It's calls to fucking Newcastle, that That's isn't. a very... Do you think the Star and Garter will be a new kind of hacienda in the... It'll still be there as a building, but it's it's not what it was. Obviously, it might still be a pub, but it won't be the Star and Garter anymore. I think, I think, yeah. I don't think it won't be rebuilt like the hacienda and turn it into just flats. Mm. You know, Lego. The outside will remain. Mm. I think inside, because of the status of the, the listing, grade two, you can do what you want with the inside. It's the outside that you'd have problems with. Yeah. Um, personally, I mean, 
after London Continental, I mean, spoke to them, and all all they kept referring to was coffee bar, coffee bar, coffee bar. I think, although it won't be them that's buying it, so maybe not. It'll have it. It, it, it remain as a pub, I think. Mm. If not, then a, a Starbucks, two floors, and possibly a drive-through section as well. Um, do you think that? If it remained a pub, they could still do gigs here. I mean, with the railway so close, would that still be a viable option? Oh, I don't see why not. Yeah. I don't. I don't see why not. It's just that um, it it operate better as a pub, mm. a pub that did food. Yeah. It's just got the area we're in. Yeah. yeah. There's a there's a, a three platform at abandoned railway station next to us. It's just slightly the wrong way, isn't it? Yeah. Like, yeah. Which everyone one? turns right. In this place mm. is left, which is kind of a a metaphor for you know the place. Yeah, you want real scandal? I'll give you one. Here's yeah. one. Right on the side of the pub on this wall, opposite the car park, there used to be a, an advertising board there. It was worth two thousand five hundred pounds a year, which then paid for the lease on the car park. Mm. So that, you know that was all fine. At the opposite end of the car park, there's a, an advertising board that's two-sided. When the Commonwealth Games, 2002, Commonwealth Games is happening, and the council phoned us and said, would you be prepared to, um, or what do you feel you'd be on hanging some flags and bunting off the Star and Garter to welcome people into, this, into the Commonwealth Games, you know, because obviously the stadium had just been built up the road. Mm-hmm. So he said, yeah, yeah, brilliant, yeah, hang some flags, we don't mind. So they said, okay then and then told us how much it would cost. So he said, well, we can't afford to buy any flags. You know what I mean? We've got guttering and, yeah. and exterior paint. Well, it would cost you. They, they, wanted to char- they wanted us to pay for the flags to hang off the building to welcome the Commonwealth Games into Manchester. So we said, well, we're sorry, we can't afford that. Um, I think it was about, th- probably three days later, um, the people who owned the advertising board that was hung off the pub came and removed it on the orders of Manchester City Council because they didn't see it as um, conducive to welcoming people wow. into the city that was hosting the Commonwealth Games. The one at the end of the car park that's double-sided, that yeah. stayed there, though. That's ridiculous. That's, that's why I love Manchester City Council so much. Yeah. So, what's next for you, then? Cause, I mean... Next for us is we have to object to the CPO by the 12th of February, and then everyone else that objects is doing it purely for like what you say, mm-hmm. just because of the gigs or the club nights. Or just because there's a part of them here that, you know, mm. or they have fond memories of it. So everybody has to bother the Secretary of State, right. I think, for transport, or the Department of Transport. Okay. Including the MOS fans. So that's what everyone has to do. Secretary of Department for Transport. Secretary, Secretary of State. Don't know who he is. Like <laughs> most people, I'm disconnected with politics massively. We'll, we'll put it up, we'll put it up in, uh, <laughs> in the description. And the description, yes. And, uh, yeah, and objects on the grounds that your band played here or you came to a club night here yeah okay. or you don't want a Starbucks yeah well that's that's what we'll do <laughs> uh, thanks so much for talking to us You're thanks for giving us your time Cheers, it's been a pleasure yeah that's all from us this week again details of how to protest the closure of the Star and Car are down below in the description do take a look send as many emails and letters as you can you know you have time for in your life uh, if you did like this please subscribe we've got more live videos and interviews next week Start a fucking riot.